Hey everybody! I would like to analyze another game from the Pan American College Championship. And this time I would like to take a look at the game of the last round in which we played against University of Texas Dallas Team B. And I played against Grandmaster Nadeshda Kosanseva. I hope I pronounced that right. She's one of the strongest women in the world. And I was playing against her on board one. And is, as it is the case, oftentimes, um, the last round in individual tournaments or team competition, in most cases, it's pretty important. And for us, it was particularly important because we needed pretty much a win to qualify for the final four tournament. So the best four teams, as you might have guessed, qualify for another tournament. Um, to eventually find out who's really the best of the best, kind of. Okay, so let's go right ahead. I was playing with the black pieces and Kosan Seva started with e4. I played the knight of, just as is my game against Fidel Corrales Jimenez. If you would like to, um, you can check this game out after this one. If you would like to see some more exciting knight of, um, I have put this game in the description. It was just played uh, two rounds before that game. Okay, so here we have the knight of um, position on the board and she played bishop g5, which is actually the move I play myself against the knight of. Knight bd7 and now bishop c4. And there's some really concrete stuff here going on. Um, there's some very sharp variations and black really has to know what he's doing. Okay, so I played e6. The move which is very popular nowadays is queen b6. And oftentimes it's, it's useful to place the queen either on b6 or a5 because you want to get the queen out of the, um, I like to say, sacrifice radius. Um, and I will tell you what I mean by that in just a moment. <clears throat> So on d8 or c7, the queen is being attacked if white is sacrificing on e6. So let's say black plays an innocent developing move, bishop e7, then white can take on e6. And now, after the sacrifice, immediately a queen is attacked. This is why black likes to place the queen on b6 or a5, because there it is not attacked immediately. And here this would be pretty awful already. Um, White is gaining another pawn, is having three pawns already, which is enough material for a piece, plus the black king is wide open. This is no good. So black really has to be aware of all these possible sacrifices. But of course I was still in my preparation here, and I played queen a5, doing exactly what I just was talking about, getting the queen out of this um, radius, I like to call it, on a5. Okay, also attacking the bishop g5, so queen d2. And here I was having quite a thing. I wasn't sure what was the right way to play. Um, I had looked at this position in the past, but I couldn't really recall what I had looked at. But then I came up with the right move here, h6, just asking this bishop what is he going to do. On which diagonal does he want to stay? And she placed the bishop back on e3, and I was quite happy actually to see that. I was more concerned about bishop h4, because on e3 the bishop is kind of in the way on the e5. It's not as dangerous anymore. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do here. I thought maybe bishop e7. Actually, my line that I have in my computer goes like that. Bishop e7, rook 81, castle. And I remember there was something like that, knight d5. Um, but looking over at the board, I thought this looks awful for black, but it's actually it's possible. Um, I was afraid maybe b4 is possible, and maybe queen takes here, knight e7, and getting the bishop here. But I guess it, it's alright. I certainly have to take a look at this whole thing again, because still I didn't feel very comfortable here. But she played the bishop back to e3, and now I played b5. And also another point being is that the bishop in e3, 
bishop d5 is not really an option. I think that maybe instead of h6 here, b5 immediately, maybe bishop d5 is a move here. Um, and now knight c6 is coming, and now um, e takes d5, rook f1 is coming. So you can see that makes a big difference whether a bishop is on g5 or on e3, because on e3 he's blocking the e-file and white is needing why it needs to spend another move freeing the e-file again. So let's return to the game. Bishop e3, b5. Here she took a long thing and eventually she sacrificed on e6. Alright, if the bishop retreats to b3, I can even think about b4 and winning this pawn on e4. So this is this is pretty pretty okay for black. And the, the other move which was possible is bishop d3, but it doesn't look like white is having anything here, bishop b7. The black queen can now go back to c7 without worrying about any sacrifice on e6. This should be fine for black too. Okay, so bishop takes e6. Knight takes. And of course, while she was um, calculating all that, I also was thinking um, about this variation and I wasn't too afraid here. Play king f7. Um, another move which is possible, suggested by a computer, is b4. I didn't really want to allow this. This looks kind of scary here with the two knights, but it's also possible. Now king f7. You don't want to allow this knight on e6 for too long. And here black is also a little bit better actually. f3, queen b5. White is not having too much for the piece. He is having two pawns right now. He can maybe play a3, maybe take on d6, but in any way black is by no means worse. Okay, but I play king f7, I just want to get rid of this knight right away. I know that I'm losing another pawn, but on the other hand, I'm bringing my king closer to a safe position. And the pawns, white is having three pawns, but they're not really that dangerous. They're not advanced a lot, and they're not, they're not causing me any worries at the moment. Okay, so now e5 is a threat, so I have to react. I play b4 pushing the knight. She played knight d5. Um, it's also possible to retreat to e2. Actually, it would have been better. Um, now, queen e5. And we reach this endgame. It should be roughly equal. I would prefer the black pieces. But it should be roughly equal here. Okay, knight d5. Knight takes. e takes. And now knight f6 attacking the pawn on d5. White cannot really protect it like that with rook f1 because rook d8 is going to win this pawn pretty soon. So she played rightly so bishop c5 threatening my rook on f8 so rook d8 now queen e7 check king g8. I was looking at this position from afar before she sacrificed the <coughs> Um, the, the, the bishop on e6 and I thought it's pretty pretty good position actually for me here because it seemed to me that there's no way really for her to keep everything together. Um, I thought okay she could play something like d6 but d6 actually looks pretty bad. Maybe go rook d7 or rook e8. Yeah I wasn't too worried and if bishop takes b4 then queen takes d5 this is also absolutely fine here and black is better. But she played c4. I didn't see this move coming at all. And it's quite a good move. And I was kind of fortunate that the following variation is possible and I still maintain an advantage here. Because I didn't see this move coming at all. And the idea is we'll see in just a moment. I played b takes c3 en passant. And now she has freed the way for this pawn on b4 and my queen you can see is protecting my rook and doesn't have any squares at the moment so I have to take on d5 with the knight and okay well now this c7 square has opened up again so she has to take the queen and I've given back my piece and we reach this endgame 
um, with opposite colored bishops. But still, I have this very far advanced pawn on c3, so I still have the advantage here. Even though I'm a pawn down, but you can see the extra pawn she's having is a double pawn on the a file, so it's not worth a lot. And here I played rook e8. Another move which is possible um, would be rook d3. But it's really difficult to evaluate here for me what's really the best setup. Now, rook fd1, maybe rook d3 would have been better. In any way, white is having a kind of difficult defensive task here because he has to constantly worry about his pawn and his pieces won't really get out, especially here. He's having some problems bringing his pieces out and black's having good chances. I played a natural move attacking a bishop on e7. She played bishop back to b4, now c2, and now f3. And here the natural move would be to play the bishop to f5. But I thought doesn't it doesn't really do much because well I'm protecting the pawn, but that's about it. She probably will play rook f e1. And well, it's not clear how am I going to get through. So I want to place my bishop on this diagonal. Um, so I could place a rook on d1. So I play bishop e6, but bishop d7 would have been better. And we'll see what's the difference in just a moment. If now rook a c1, we reach a very similar position than what we will see in the game, as we will see in the game, um, with the difference that the pawn is on a2 instead of a3. So here, well, rook d1 is a threat, and she has to give the exchange pretty much. Um, and now rook c8. This is pretty much the same what we'll see in the game. The only difference is the pawn is on a2 instead of a3, that means he's unprotected and here um, I can force the rook exchange, otherwise, well, what will lose the pawn. Honestly, I think that should be a draw too here, this position, but I can try something um, and I have some chances. I think objectively it should be a draw, but I have some chances. Okay, so let's see what I did. I played bishop e6. One idea is, by the way, if rook f e1, now then I can take on a2. And, well, she can't take because I would queen here. So, that would be good for me. <laughs> Obviously. Um, so she played rook a c1. And now rook b8, that was my idea. Play rook b8 now. And to provoke a3, so I can place my bishop on b3. And she played a3, bishop b3, and now she played rook f2. She really defended very well here, um, I have to say. So the point is now that she's threatening to give to exchange, and I allowed her to do so. I could also play rook bc8, but now this is a problem. She will take the d file and well it seemed to me that I'm having not enough here. I could try that. And white is still still has to defend here. Trying to get the king closer, but I think white is holding on and will be will be able to hold a draw here. I'm pretty confident. So I thought my best chance is to go into this endgame. Rook takes, bishop takes, rook takes, and you can see it is the same thing here. And she's keeping the rook, which is good, because this is also a rule of thumb you can remember from this game. Um, if you're down in exchange, then keep your rook, because with the rook you can always create a counterplay. And this is pretty much what she's doing in the game, as you will see. Um, without the rook, I would have complete control. I mean, there's nothing I have to worry about here. I can just try to slowly improve my position, try to do something. But with the rook, I always have to worry or at least care about what she's doing. Okay, rook d2, rook c1, check, king f2, rook e c8. Again, I'm trying to exchange the rooks. 
but she's not allowing me to do so. Place king g3. Now rook wants c2, rook d7. And she's also having ideas here to maybe attack the pawn on a6 or maybe against g7. So I have to be careful. Okay, rook a c6, threatening rook g6 check. And now king h3. Um, which is, I think, an inaccuracy. She should play f4, which is a weird move, honestly, because it's giving away this pawn. But the pawn is that <clears throat> after rook c takes g2, f5 is coming, which is quite unpleasant. And um, after rook g takes g2, now rook d6, and now white is having counterplay in it. In all these variations, I never really want to give my a6 pawn away because it's kind of difficult to control this a5 pawn because as you can see, I cannot uh, control it from behind because the pawn is on a3. And I also have to say something about the match situation because at the moment we are leading at one and a half, with one and a half points, two more games going, and both games were better, so I was better and board three was also better. So we just need two draws and I didn't really want to take any risks here, um, any risks to lose. Okay, but anyway, she didn't play f4, so she played king h3. Now if rook g6, she can just play g3 or maybe even g4. So I play rook e2, and it's, I thought it's kind of nice how actually both rooks are completely dominating the bishop here on b4. It doesn't have any squares really. Um, so now I'm threatening to maybe double on the second rank. So she played rook a7, having an eye on the pawn. And once again, I didn't want to give up this pawn, because here, who knows? Who knows what's happening, really? So I didn't want to do this. I played good move here, h5, just taking some space away from the king. And I thought it was also um, preventing g4. And now she played well, she has to play some kind of move, but she played rook b7, which is, I don't know, um, which is taking the, the pressure away from the pawn on a6. And here I, I could have had really good winning chance if I played rook cc2 now. I, I don't know, I was, I was just too afraid giving up the a6 pawn, I guess. But here it's really a really good version. Um, Rook b6, rook takes g2. And, well, my pawn is also going to be fast if I win the h2 pawn, so white can protect this pawn. Now, rook g6 would, would be possible, maybe. Um, or rook gf2, king h4, rook takes f3. Yeah. King takes h5. Um, Plague is definitely having some good chances here. Rook f6 now and if rook takes a6 and rook takes h2 is possible. So that would have given me really good chances to win. But yeah I missed that. Um, because once again I want to play it safe anyway. So I, I think I didn't even spend too much time considering rook cc2 but if I was if I was really um, if we had needed a win or something like that, I probably would have played it. Okay, so I played rook g6, but now simply g3, and somehow there's no further way for me to to get anything. Um, yeah, one more line I would like to show is just rook f6, now f4, rook c6. That would have given me, again, some advantage here. Um, but this looks sketchy. I mean, with the king now up in front, you know, you're, I'm, I was afraid about getting mated. So, <clears throat> but this once again works out for black, and um, I would have won a pawn here. But I didn't play that. I played king h7. I thought I can just improve my position here. But, yeah, here after f4, I, I, I figured... Um, what can I do now? Because what I actually missed is I, I want to bring my rook over now, I think, 
But I missed that now suddenly bishop f8 is possible because my king is not a g8 anymore. And actually this is still possible, but it's once again a little bit risky. And I didn't want to do this. This could be a possible variation here. Um, this still looks risky, but white has to give back a pawn here. And okay, this is a draw. So actually here I was getting a little bit nervous, honestly, because I felt like I had not played it the perfect way. Um, and I just played rook e3 because I was also concerned now that the bishop was coming to e5 or anything. So I just played rook e3 and I offered a draw. And uh, I was a little bit relieved when she accepted immediately because I was feeling that my position was getting a little bit unpleasant. I mean, objectively speaking, it's all fine, it's equal, but um, yeah. I wasn't too happy anymore. King h4, f5 ideas. I wasn't too happy anymore. And so I offered a draw and she accepted. And we actually won the match with 3 to 1, so was all good. Um, we qualified going to New York and everything's great. All right. Um, I think there's there's a parallel to a game against Corrales Humanus. Once again, if you haven't seen that one, you can uh, click in the description below. But once again, I, I got the advantage. I had the advantage most of the game, but in the in the um, important moment, I just misstepped. Um, I could have had a really good game of Rook CC2. And um, I gave my advantage away, which is a pity. Because if you work for an advantage pretty much the whole game, you, you want to convert it. You want to win. And I didn't succeed in doing so. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you could take something from it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.